Science tells us that the inner experience in your heart, in my heart, that our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, our prayers, our beliefs in our bodies have no effect on the world beyond our bodies. Do you believe that? I'm going to tell you, there is a language. There is a language that lives in every human that walks this earth. It's a language of no words. It's a language of human emotion. That feeling is something that does not happen in your mind. It happens in your heart. That feeling, that feeling is a language. That feeling is a power that lives inside of your body. Today, modern science is beginning to understand that that feeling that happens inside of our bodies has a direct effect on the stuff our world is made of, on the atoms and the molecules of our physical world. So what we choose to experience in our lives, we must first feel in our hearts as if it has already happened. So the question, how much power, how much power do we really have to change our world, to change our lives, to change our bodies? How much power do you believe that we really have? The question that we're really asking is who are we? Who are we? And this is the great mystery and the controversy in the language of science. Are we simply observers? passive observers in this universe watching the world go by or are we powerful creators as our most cherished religious and spiritual traditions have always said are we actually powerful creators that have forgotten how to use our power how many have heard of the lost gospel of thomas the lost gospel of thomas some of you have heard of that text very very powerful text the lost gospel of Thomas is powerful because it is believed to be the actual words of Jesus as he was teaching those around him how to use the power of human emotion in his life to unleash the force of the divine matrix in our lives first we have to understand how it works and the science tells us how it works secondly we must speak the language that the divine matrix recognizes and science cannot tell us that that comes from our past from our culture from our history from those who have learned and used this language for thousands of years so this is what we're doing right now we're learning what did Jesus and what did the great masters say about this this language because it's the same whether you're talking Buddhist or Hindu or Christian pre-Christian traditions they're all telling us that there is a field of energy and that we have the language to use that field this is an actual page out of the Gospel of Thomas so we know that this this ancient gospel actually existed and you can you can see some of the letters these are Greek letters you can actually read some of if you know Greek you can see some of the Greek letters right here. In the Gospel of Thomas, two very important keys. This was written uh, right around 300 uh, years after the time of Jesus. In this Gospel, okay, so here, here's what we're doing. We've been in the Buddhist monasteries in Tibet, and they're telling us that we must, that feeling is the prayer, one. Two, that we must feel as if our prayers have already been answered. Gospel of Thomas, if you have a copy of the Gospel of Thomas, this is verse 106. It says, when you make the two thought and emotion one. So the Gospel of Thomas is talking about thought and emotion it's saying when you make your thought and your emotion one look at what happens you will say to the mountain mountain move away and the mountain will move away 
saying that when you can marry your thought and your emotion into one single potent force, that is when you have the power to speak to the world. Now this is verse 48. It says almost the same thing. This was so important that it was recorded at least three different times in the same gospel. Look at what this says. If the two make peace with each other in this one house, when Jesus is talking about the house or the temple, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? Precisely you. You are the house. You are the temple. If the two make peace with each other in this house, if thought and emotion become one, if they make peace with each other in this house, look what happens. They will say to the mountain, move away, and it will move away. He's telling us again, in a completely different verse, how powerful it is to marry thought and emotion. But they still haven't told us how. How do you do this? That's the next piece. In the early Christian Bible, your Bible today, there is a passage. How many have heard, ask and ye shall receive? Have you heard that before? Ask and ye shall receive. Have you heard that? I know people that ask and ask and ask and nothing happens. Because the asking is not done with the voice. The asking is not done please please bring this to my world that's not asking to ask we must speak to the field to the divine matrix in the language that the field recognizes in a language that's meaningful the field doesn't recognize our voice it recognizes the power of our heart remember this morning our heart we have a feeling creates electrical waves magnetic waves that's the language the field recognizes so when you create the feeling in your heart as if your prayer is already answered, that creates the electrical and the magnetic waves that bring that answer to you. And you're going to see this in just a moment. Ask and you shall receive. While we still have this passage in our text, in the Bible that you have today, the King James Version, John 16, 23, 24, what you have is the condensed version. You have the edited version. The edited version looks like this. This is the edited version. Whatsoever ye ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name okay ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full okay this is the edited version this is so amazing to me because they took out the two sentences that tell us how to ask In the fourth century, when the edits happened, they took those two sentences out. Would you like to see those two original sentences? Okay, we'll go back into the original Aramaic and we'll look at a new translation. This is the original Aramaic. It begins, it looks very similar. So this is the retranslated version with the missing pieces. All things that you ask straightly, directly, from inside my name, you will be given. It says, so far you've not done this. Because if we ask with our voice, we have not done this. Now here's the piece that was edited. Here is what was lost. Look at these two very powerful sentences. Ask without hidden motive and be surrounded by your answer, be enveloped by what you desire, that your gladness be full. Look at what it's saying. It's not saying to speak a word, it's saying to be surrounded, to feel as if. If you 
are surrounded, you are feeling as if your answer has already happened. Be enveloped. If you want the perfect relationship in your life, if you want the healing in the body of your loved ones, feel the feeling of what it is like as if that has already happened. Be enveloped by what you desire because that is when your thought and your emotion become one. You think the thought of the healing in your loved ones and you feel the love of that thought. They become one and that is the language that this field recognizes. Does that make sense? Are you okay with that? Ask without hidden motive. What does that mean? Hidden motive. Ask without judgment. This is precisely what the Buddhists are telling us. Ask without the judgment of the right or the wrong or the good or the bad. Ask without the ego. Ask from the heart. Is this meaningful to you? Is this helpful at all? Let me give you an example then. Because to be, if it says be surrounded, that means to feel as if. To feel as if. Now if that sounds too religious, because it's from the Bible, we smoke, spoke this morning uh, about Neville, uh, the, the philosopher Neville, early in the 20th century. His book, The Power of Awareness. Look at what he says, it's the same thing. Neville says, you must make your future dream a present fact. Now, by assuming the feeling of your wish fulfilled, to come from the place that it's already happened. Physical reality must respond to the language that it understands. So in the Buddhist traditions, they are telling us the quality of the feeling. And in the Judeo-Christian traditions, they are giving us the instructions to be surrounded, to be enveloped, how to create that feeling. And when you put those all together, it's something that happens in our hearts, not in our minds. Feeling as if the prayer is already answered with no judgment and no ego and feeling from the result. Feeling from the result as if it's already happened.